everybody, I'm Tony Fleming from Fleming's Ultimate Garage. You're saying, what's a guy who normally handles American cars doing with a Mercedes like this? And I say, well, because we have sold hundreds and hundreds of Mercedes, hundreds and hundreds of European classics, and I think we have an idea what we're talking about. I'm gonna spend a few minutes walking around the car. You'll try to refute the simple fact is that I have no idea what I'm talking about. However, I'm gonna present this car to you, and by the time I'm done, I have a feeling that you're gonna be very interested, and I'll tell you why. First off, this is a collector card. You say, Tone, oh, stop. Already, you're a maniac. And I'm saying, no, 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 hear me out for just a second. It is a collector card. What does that mean? All right. Low production, right? Only 900 of these came to the United States. Mercedes built millions of cars that year. Only 900 of these came to the, to the United States because it was the most expensive car in the arsenal. The most expensive car you could buy from Mercedes is this right here. Just to convert real quick, sticker price, $132,990 in 1993. Translated in today, $269,000. If you were buying an SL65 today, right? With a 12 cylinder engine in it, you'd be paying 269 grand. They didn't sell a lot of them. Why? Because they were so expensive and why? I love this car. Secondly, it's a one owner car. One owner, right? Where do you find these things, Tone? Where are you finding these cars? That's my secret, man. It's what we do. Can't ask. Don't ask about the secret sauce just enjoy the sauce. Secondly, right, we're going to walk around the car, we're going to look at what's authentic and what's not, and then I'm going to give you a couple options. I'm going to give you an option on if you want to stay with the stock wheel and tire there or do the AMG monoblock wheel. I'll put a picture online also of that car with those on it. That's going to look really, really good. You can make the decision then. Let's get started. All right, so we're talking about uh, what is a Mercedes and why is a Mercedes a Mercedes? Well, a Mercedes is expensive because you're getting really nice stuff. For instance, the way doors close. A convertible is normally a rattly car, but here they built this car. Listen. That's what Mercedes does. It's just nice, right? The paint on the car is really nice compared to other cars. But what's most important to me is we have a collector car with the original paint. You say, well, Tone, whoa, back to refuting whatever it is you're saying. How do you know it's original paint? Could you taste the paint? I said, no, of course I can't taste the paint. I don't know anything about the taste of paint, but I do know this. I own this thing, right? This is an electronic paint meter. And what it does is measures the millionth of an inch thick. You say, well, Tone, well, how does that work? Okay, let me tell you how it works. So, when a car is painted at the factory, it's painted in a hospital-like environment to keep dirt and dust out of there, right? And so the robots, depending on the year, whether it's hand-painted or uh, robots paint the car, it goes down the assembly line. The front's typically a little bit thicker to, to handle with rock chips and what have you, and as you move around the car. If the car was in an accident, right, they would do a good job fixing wherever the panel was that was damaged. However, they wouldn't care about how thick the paint is, and this highlights that. So. A modern car is measured in between five and nine millionths of an inch thick of paint with including the clear coat. Five to nine millionths of an inch thick, right? And we've gone around this car and we wanted to show you real quick so you know, this is how you know you have a collector car with original paint, right? We start here, we got five, we move to, to wherever you want, we could go to any place, nine, and it changes as you move around the car, right? Okay, eight, 6.5, so on and so on, as I mentioned in there. So this right here tells us what kind of paint we have, which I think is pretty cool when you think about uh, having a car. We're, this is 2024 that we're doing this video, and uh, 30 years later, 30 plus years later, we have a car with ridiculously low miles and almost all original. All right, so I just like to do the paint quality test because under these lights, this car is glowing and it looks amazing because these are LED lights. Oh, by the way, they're brand new LED lights and they look good. Thank you to Pepco for giving those to us. But secondly, I like to do this here. This car has been garaged its whole life, right? It's been garaged its whole life. Tons of service records and history on it. And just look at the shine and how you can read the window sticker inside uh, of the paint. White doesn't show up so great with white paper, but you get the point. Ahead of its time, headlight washers with with wipers themselves. Today's washer is just a squirter. Back then, Mercedes did uh, the whole thing. You got all of that. The SL600 didn't have any options, man. It gave you everything you could possibly get, and that's why it was expensive. All right, so let's take a peek under here because this is what separates you from every SL ever built, okay? 
This is cool, man. Let me just tell you what, you have stuffed this six plus liter V12 in here with overdrive automatic, all aluminum, handmade, hand built, hand assembled, okay? And somehow they were able to get it inside this engine compartment. 389 horsepower, but over 400 foot pounds of torque. How are you doing? All right, let's get back to collector car for a second and why this is important, okay? So for instance here, we are looking at original stickers that would have come on the car and you say, Tone, what do I care about some 30 old stickers? Well, let me tell you why you wanna care about that is, and this is the reason why. If this car was in an accident, right, they would have to replace this piece, okay? And you wouldn't get these stickers that are on here, all right? This right here, looking to be the original engine compartment uh, padding. Uh, the original stickers are here for uh, the, the, the suspension that you would have got, which is special for this car. Uh, letting you know the batteries in the trunk, right? Because they needed the room in here, so they moved everything to the back. Uh, a lot of the decals for all of the components are still on here. The Bosch injection units, right? This is an amazing car. You could go to a car show, open the car, open the hood like this, and this will draw a crowd because not many people have ever seen a 12 cylinder in an SL, not to mention a factory built car. All right, so for the car uh, aficionado, enthusiast, in the know, right? There's only a couple small things that identify this car of one of very few built, right? And this little emblem right here, and the one on the side there uh, calling out that. Sorry, the children are playing if they're distracting. I apologize, they like to be involved in here. I'm trying to do some video and they, uh, anyway, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. One cool thing too I wanted to point out before we get into this is this right here is power operated. So you can either put it all the way down, you don't see it, but in the event that the car tilts or could uh, start to spin or whatever, this right here pops up immediately as a roll bar. Or you could drive around with it up, which it looks pretty cool up as well. I just wanted to show you that too. Okay, back to this right here. This car is designed to travel. All of this area back there is for luggage, soft luggage, whatever you want, right? Then even more in here. You want to put some more luggage in? Here's even more storage in here. This has has an upgraded audio system in it um, and here we have the amp that's hidden Alpine right this also has a battery tender because they knew they didn't drive it very much that's why the mileage is so low this is somebody's fourth car right third or fourth or maybe even fifth car car that they kept at their uh, at their estate and they drove once in a while right that shows in the service records where it was located which allows us to to see that and then you still get that great kind of uh, before I close that, just one last thing. Another decal, right? Another decal, I like this decal because this is original decal you can't buy either. It says that this right here is all original too. And they get that great sound. Like, listen to that, man. You're not getting that for regular cars. Just nice. All right, so when you walk up to the car, it's already a great looking car. It's already classic. This is considered a classic car because of its style, because of its price, because of all the things we're talking about, right? But what you see outside is nothing like what it is inside because when you get inside this car, it is a den of comfort. This is super. All right, so. Uh, all of the wood still in great condition, right? Not broken and cracked up like normal wood is because they were outside a lot. This has upgraded audio, which you can see some of the speakers are hidden around there. We talked about the amp and the JL speakers that are back here. This has heated seats. It has, of course, power seats for both sides with three memories for each seat, which is crazy. 160 mile an hour speedometer. They say the top speed of this is right around 158, almost pin the speedometer, which is crazy. Um, and then you have a full array of gauges too. This may be a luxury car, but it's also a sports car too, right? You're talking about a 7,000 RPM tack and oil and all of those good things. Climate control. I love this feature right here. Check this out. The factory phone. Do you know how expensive this was if it didn't come standard in this car? That phone right there, I want to say it was in between three and 5,000 depending on the year and the make and the model of the car. Remember the 90s, there was no iPhone. There was no Android, none of this stuff. This was the infancy of car phones. You had bag phones and things like that. This was a pioneer. Leather, ventilated, 
condition is amazing. The carpets are amazing. The plastics, the leathers, all of this stuff is really in exceptional condition. And you, and you wonder why I'm rambling on about that. Well, because I see these cars all the time and they're tortured by uh, the bad weather. When a car is kept inside and it's a car that you use every once in a while or a summertime only car, uh, it really is an amazing, amazing piece of history. And uh, to own it uh, is really spectacular. All right, so we close up this video. I think that now we're starting to see what we're talking about when I say collector car. We're talking about very expensive for its time, so it made it low production, right? Not many people could afford a $269,000 car in today's dollars back in 1993, right? Uh, many people didn't even know that we were available. Like, they felt the V8 was enough, but this was so much more, so much more than just horsepower. This was torque delivering, like, crazy top speed. Typically, people manufacturers will put a speedometer in that would, that would go 30 to 50 miles an hour over its actual top speed. Here, this has a 160 mile an hour speedometer. The car in the, in the press says 158 plus, right? Wow, serious. Two sets of wheels and tires, we can talk about that, uh, the look. Also, one other thing I want to uh, mention, not to mention uh, the low mileage and the authenticity of it is, but if you wanted to add a hard top to it, we could probably source a white hard top uh, that would look really cool. It changes the whole look of the car from the black soft top. Once you put the hard top on, it turns it into a different kind of like sports car. Completely different look for a completely different time. Maybe you want to drive it in the winter with it on there. That's an option as well. Anyway, it's just so cool. There's so many cool things to do with this car. Uh, first off, you need to just enjoy it. Second, you know, if you want to do things to it, you can if you just want to drive it. That is awesome too. It is meant to be driven. Anyway, call us 301. 816-1000 will tell you all about this incredible SL600, all right? And if you don't mind, hit the like button down below. That helps get the message out and uh, uh, share with your friends. They might like to see that as well. And uh, I will see you on the next one.